You're probably thinking another AI gadget is just going to be another overpriced gimmick that ends up in your junk drawer. And honestly, I don't blame you. We've all been burned by these promises before. Google Glass, Humane's AI pin that literally overheated and died. Well, I've been following every leak and interview about this story. And here's what completely changed my perspective. Sam Altman just spent $6.5 billion, not million, billion, to acquire Joni Ives' entire company for one device. Something that big doesn't happen, unless they know something we don't. Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what OpenAI and Johnny Ive are building behind closed doors, why every other AI device has failed miserably, and what makes this collaboration so different that it could actually change how we interact with technology forever. By the end of this, you'll understand why this might be the first AI device worth getting excited about, or why it could be the most expensive failure in tech history. Either way, the clues are fascinating. Let's start with what we actually know about this mysterious device, because the details that have leaked are absolutely wild. The $6.5 billion acquisition that shocked Silicon Valley, when Sam Altman announced in May 2025 that OpenAI had acquired Joni Ive's startup, IO, for $6.5 billion in an all-stock deal, the tech world went absolutely silent for a moment. To put this in perspective, that's more than what Meta paid for WhatsApp and it's for a company that was founded just one year earlier in 2024. But here's where it gets really interesting. This wasn't some spur-of-the-moment decision. According to insider reports, Altman and Ive had been quietly collaborating for almost two years before this acquisition was even announced. OpenAI had actually purchased a 23% stake in IO for $1.5 billion before deciding to buy the whole company outright. Altman literally absorbed Ive's entire team into OpenAI to create what they're calling a family of devices that would let people use AI to create all sorts of wonderful things. And when I say absorbed, I mean he poached dozens of Apple's top engineers and designers, including Tang Tan, who was Apple's VP of product design for both the iPhone and Apple Watch. These aren't just any engineers. These are the people who designed the most successful consumer devices in human history. Now, you might be wondering why OpenAI would venture into hardware when they're already dominating AI software. Altman's reasoning is actually pretty compelling. He argues that today's phones and laptops were designed long before ChatGPT existed, and now that computers are seeing, thinking, and understanding, we need something much better than these legacy devices. In other words, our current technology is fundamentally incompatible with truly intelligent AI. What we know about the mystery device. Here's where the story gets both exciting and frustrating, because OpenAI and IVE have been incredibly secretive about specifics. But through legal filings, patent documents, and carefully parsed interviews, a picture is starting to emerge of something genuinely revolutionary. First, let's talk about what this device definitely won't be. It's not a phone, not glasses, not earbuds, and not a smartwatch. Tang Tan explicitly stated in court documents that the final design is not in-ear and not a wearable device. Sam Altman has been even more direct, telling podcasters that this gadget will go beyond the constraints of today's computer and smartphone interfaces. So, what will it be? Multiple sources describe it as a pocket-sized, screen-free AI companion. Imagine something roughly the size of an iPod that you can slip into your pocket. But instead of playing music, it's constantly listening, understanding your context, and ready to help you get done whatever you want to get done. That's literally how Altman described it. But wait until you hear this part. The device is being designed as a voice-first, context-aware assistant that knows where you are, what time it is, and what you're trying to accomplish. The vision is something like having a genius AI colleague available 24-7, but without the friction of pulling out your phone, opening an app, and typing. You just speak, and it responds intelligently. 
Reports suggest the device will be always listening and contextually aware, which means it's not just waiting for you to activate it like Siri or Alexa. It's actively understanding your environment and situation, so it can proactively help. The most intriguing detail, Altman admits it doesn't even have a clear name yet. My AI companion is the best description they've come up with so far. Business Insider obtained some fascinating details from trademark filings that give us more clues. The device is described as fundamentally different from Humane's AI pin, even though both are attempting to create screen-free AI interactions. While Humane's device was essentially a wearable computer, OpenAI's approach seems to be more like a pocket-sized AI brain that you interact with naturally. Why this time might be different to understand why this device could be revolutionary, we need to think about interfaces and how they shape our relationship with technology. The fundamental problem with current AI interfaces is that they're still built around the old paradigm of commanding computers rather than collaborating with them. When you use ChatGPT on your phone, you're essentially treating it like a very sophisticated search engine. Real collaboration is fluid, contextual, and ongoing. It's full of interruptions, clarifications, and building on previous conversations. It happens while you're doing other things, not as a separate activity that requires your full attention. This is why Altman and I keep talking about moving beyond screens and keyboards, because those interfaces inherently create barriers between you and the AI. The goal, according to internal documents, is to make AI interaction feel so natural that the technology disappears. Instead of thinking, I need to ask ChatGPT something, you would just think out loud and receive intelligent responses. Instead of switching between apps and interfaces, you would have one consistent AI relationship that spans all your activities. The all-star team, behind the project. What gives this project real credibility isn't just the money involved. It's the absolutely stacked team they've assembled. When Joni Ive left Apple in 2019, he founded Lovefrom, and then IO, with a specific vision of creating the next generation of human-computer interfaces. But the real power move was bringing Tangton into the project as co-founder. This is the engineer who helped design the iPhone and Apple Watch, literally two of the most successful consumer devices in history. That means OpenAI's hardware division now has the person who understands how to make technology both powerful and intuitive at the deepest level. They've also recruited Evans Hankey, another Apple design leader, and according to press reports, dozens of other Apple veterans and manufacturing specialists. OpenAI even partnered with Luxshare, which is Apple's manufacturer, to build prototypes. This isn't some startup hoping to disrupt Apple from the outside. This is essentially Apple's former design team, building the next evolution of Apple's vision, but with OpenAI's AI capabilities at the core. But here's what makes this team truly formidable. They're combining world-class hardware expertise with the most advanced AI technology available. Previous AI hardware companies either had great AI, but mediocre hardware, or decent hardware, but inferior AI. OpenAI has both why previous AI devices failed. Before we get too excited, let's be honest about the track record of AI hardware. Google Glass promised to revolutionize computing, but ended up being creepy and impractical. Humane's AI pin was supposed to replace your smartphone, but instead overheated, gave terrible responses, and the company folded within two years. The fundamental problem with most AI devices has been that they've been solutions looking for problems. Companies built cool technology and then tried to convince people they needed it, rather than identifying real friction points in how we interact with AI. But here's where OpenAI's approach might be different. They're not starting with hardware and trying to make it smart. They're starting with the world's most advanced AI system and asking, what would the perfect interface for this intelligence actually look like? They already have hundreds of millions of people using ChatGPT successfully, so they understand the actual use cases and pain points. They know what kinds of conversations people want to have with AI, what works well in text-based interfaces, and what feels clunky or unnatural. 
This gives them a massive advantage over previous AI hardware companies that were essentially guessing. The strategic play, more than just hardware. But let me tell you what I think is really driving this project, because it's much bigger than just building a cool gadget. Right now, if you want to use ChatGPT, you have to go through Apple's iOS or Google's Android, through their app stores, following their rules, and giving them a cut of any revenue. By creating their own hardware platform, OpenAI could build a direct relationship with users and capture much more value from the AI services they provide. It's the same strategy that made Apple so phenomenally successful. Control the entire experience from hardware to software to services. But instead of building that ecosystem around communication and apps like Apple did, OpenAI is building it around artificial intelligence. The question is whether there's actually room in people's lives for another device. Altman's bet is that the interface itself is the breakthrough. That talking to AI should be as natural as talking to a person. And that our current screen-based devices will always feel clunky for that kind of interaction. Timeline and what to expect. So when can you actually get your hands on this mysterious device? According to Business Insider, the team has no plans to advertise or sell the device for at least a year. Bloomberg reports suggest a potential debut in 2026, and when it does launch, rumors hint at a massive rollout, possibly targeting 100 million units, though that's pure speculation. What's most telling is that promotional materials from OpenAI end by saying, we look forward to sharing our work next year. That suggests we might see our first real glimpse of the device sometime in 2026, with actual sales potentially not happening until 2027. That timeline actually makes sense when you consider the complexity of what they're trying to build. This isn't just about miniaturizing existing technology. They're trying to create an entirely new category of device with an entirely new interface paradigm. Even with Joni Ives' design expertise and Tang Tan's engineering brilliance, that's an enormous technical challenge. The major challenges ahead. Let's be realistic about the enormous technical challenges they're facing. Creating a screen-free, voice-first AI device that works reliably in real-world conditions is incredibly difficult. Voice recognition in noisy environments, battery life in a small form factor, context awareness without being intrusive. These are all unsolved problems that have defeated companies with decades of hardware experience. There's also the question of privacy and social acceptance. A device that's always listening and context aware will inevitably collect enormous amounts of personal data. Users will need to trust that this data is protected and processed responsibly, which is challenging given the current climate around data privacy. Competition is another major factor. Apple, Google, Amazon, and others aren't standing still. They're all working on next-generation AI interfaces, and they have significant advantages in terms of resources, manufacturing capabilities, and existing user relationships. The verdict, revolution or expensive gamble? So here's my honest take after diving deep into this story. On one hand, this has all the ingredients of a potential breakthrough. You have the world's most advanced AI company partnering with arguably the most successful product designer in history backed by billions in funding and a team of Apple's former hardware superstars. The vision they're describing, a seamless, intelligent companion that makes AI as natural as conversation, is genuinely compelling and addresses real limitations of current AI interfaces. If they can deliver on that promise, it could indeed change how we interact with technology. But on the other hand, hardware is brutally difficult and AI devices have a terrible track record. Even Google with all their resources couldn't make glass work. The technical challenges are enormous, and there's a fundamental question about whether people actually want another device when smartphones can already access AI services. What gives me cautious optimism is that Altman and Ive seem to understand these challenges. They've been quietly iterating for two years, they're not rushing to market, and they're being thoughtful about fundamental interface problems rather than just throwing sensors and AI into a conventional device. 
The real test will be whether they can create something that people actually want to use every day, not just something that's technically impressive. Can they make AI interaction feel natural enough that people will carry a second device? Can they solve real problems that smartphones can't handle well? Conclusion Whether this mysterious AI device succeeds or fails, the collaboration between Sam Altman and Joni Ive represents something significant in the evolution of human-computer interaction. They're betting that the future of AI isn't just better software, but fundamentally different hardware designed from the ground up for intelligent interaction. As someone who's been following AI development closely, I find myself genuinely curious about what they'll unveil. The secrecy, the massive investment, the all-star team, it all suggests they're working on something they believe could be truly transformative. Will it work? We'll find out in the next couple of years. But one thing is certain. If anyone can crack the code on AI hardware, it's probably the team that created the iPhone working with the company that created CHATGPT. What do you think? Are you excited about the possibility of a screen-free AI companion? Or do you think this is just another overhyped gadget waiting to disappoint? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this deep dive helpful, hit that subscribe button because I'll be following this story closely as more details emerge. The future of AI hardware is being written right now, and this collaboration might just be the first chapter of something incredible, or the most expensive lesson in why some technologies aren't ready for prime time. Either way, it's going to be fascinating to watch unfold.